Okay, so here we are. We're going to do a quick uh, tutorial on the first half of our parallax assignment, which is basically clipping out the elements. Um, so we're going to go File, Open, and we'll navigate to our photo of Simone. Peg, make sure it's the right one. Okay, so this is the unedited version of the Simone JPEG. So I'm just going to go through the steps to clip her out and stamp in the background and basically save this as a Photoshop document that we can then bring into After Effects. And so first thing I want to do is clip her out. Now, as I explained in class, the best way to do this is to take the pen tool and draw it by hand. But there are certain times when you can use workarounds like the quick select tool. If you've never used Photoshop, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through the whole process and tell you everything you need uh, to be successful here. So the quick select tool works by selecting pixels, uh, and it can do that by sort of sensing contrast. You see we have uh, the dark here, and then it's lighter on her, on her shirt and her arm. And so basically you just, you can use the left and right bracket keys right above return and under delete to make your uh, tool larger or smaller. Notice it's got a plus sign in the middle. That means it's adding to the selection. So I'm going to click and drag. And that's all you really have to do to get your initial selection. But your initial selection is going to be flawed uh, because we're using an automatic algorithm to select. We're not using our eyeballs. Our eyeballs are better than automatic algorithms, sometimes, <laughs> most of the time. So here's a situation where you see I got more than I needed. So I'm gonna hold down the Option key. Watch what happens to the tool when I hold down the Option key. I'm just pressing the Option key, I'm not clicking. Now you notice it's now a negative, and if I click, it will remove pixels from the selection. And this is why the amount of fixing that you have to do uh, in my opinion, if you're good with the pen tool, uh, you're better off just doing it right rather than trying to let a computer uh, analyze a photo accurately. Not to say that they can't in some situations. It will depend. Uh, but this one is not a particularly good uh, selection right off the bat. As you can see here, I'm zooming in using the plus and minus key. Uh, I'm shrinking down my brush and holding down option to try to really just get it in there and remove as many of those pixels as I can. But as you can see, it's only going to let me be so successful here. In the end, quite honestly, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal because those it's basically black on black. Uh, you would only notice it if her hand kind of crossed over a brightly colored boundary. So here's a situation where we've got this triangle here where there's no, uh, where I don't want anything in the selection. So I can hold down the option key and you'll notice that it's pretty good about recognizing what's going on. And shrink this down a little bit, hold down the option key again. And we come over here and select some of these hairs. And this is when you kind of have to be careful because if you select too much, it may end up jumping all the way to the top of the frame. Um, so make sure you're not using too big of a brush. If your brush is bigger than these hairs, you're going to end up selecting more than you meant to. And I'm just trying to bring in as much of this detail because a lot of times when you're when you're moving like this the hair is really what kind of accentuates the movement and so if you clip it all off and you end up with just kind of a, a clump that is sort of looking like it's you know if we clipped off all these flyaways then uh, it would significantly reduce the impression that she's moving so again it's not a huge issue because it's pretty much black on black anyways but uh, for future stuff like this, you really want to be able to do a good job clipping out as much of this as we can. 
Okay, that's going to have to do it for that. Looks pretty good. And now I'm going to go down and look at her face. And notice we need to add in the nose here. So I'll just select that out there. Let's come over to this hand. So again, I'm spending a lot of time fixing up a half decent clip when I could have, when I say clip, I mean removing the subject from the image. Uh, when I could have just done this better myself uh, using the pen tool and creating a path. So if you want to learn how to do that, sign up for 120 next semester and I will go through every uh, aspect of clipping and selecting images in Photoshop. Photoshop is an awesome program. So to move my, my screen around, I'm just hitting the space bar and sliding my mouse. Okay. All right. So I'm going to back out, hitting Command minus to back out, Command plus to zoom in. And that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little spot missing over here on the toe. There we go. Okay, and with that done, all I have to do is make sure my layer is selected, which it is. Go up to uh, select, which is referring to my selection, and go modify feather one pixel. So we'll copy it and paste it again. Now we will select out our bar. And this is pretty easy because it's straight and it's got hard lines and there's a lot of contrast. So we'll go back to the main image. You can hit uh, not S, but uh, quick selection tool is W. So W is the key command. Use the bracket keys to make it large. And then just kind of walk it down the middle. And with this one, it's really hard not to select the bottom. So just hold down option and go back and remove it. This isn't quote unquote, the professional way to do this. Um, but it is the fast way to do this. Now that looked pretty good right there. So I'm going to run with that. So again, command C, command V, copy it. Once you have your selection done, all you have to do is copy and paste it. And that will put it on its own layer. Now I could have feathered that one a little bit too. Um, but I don't know if it was necessary. I think it looks fine the way it is. Okay, that was the easy part. Now comes the time consuming part, but this is a skill you have to have. So we're gonna turn off both the top two layers by toggling the eyeball right here. And then I'm gonna go down to the background layer. Now by default, you see this little lock on here, the background layer is locked. Double click it, click okay, now it's unlocked. Okay, so now we can get to work. Stamping. So the nice thing is the key command is the S key. Take, press that, and now I have my stamp tool. Let's talk about this tool real quick. Uh, bracket keys, make it larger or smaller. And I know, I think with a modifier, you can soften it, but you can also go up here, and there is your size and your hardness. Now hardness refers to the stamp itself. If I sample and I click, you see that I get soft edges, okay? Versus coming in here and setting the hardness to 100%, stamping, and then getting that. Basically controlling the feather on the edge of the tool. So when we're doing this type of work, you generally want maximum feather so that things blend together. Um, so let's just go ahead and start Stamping. So with stamping, you kind of want to have a bit of a game plan. You want to look at the lines and try to continue them. So let me show you how this works. So let's start with this leg. Let's stamp that leg out. So behind that leg is a blurry railing. Okay, there it is. And there it is. What I'm going to do is try to continue that railing. So watch how this works. I'm going to hold down option I'm way over here. Not right there. I'm way over here. And you'll see why in a second. Hold down option and click. That's selecting uh, this area. And now if I come over here, you can see there it is. And so I'm looking right under her toe here. There's a little white bar that goes up. So I'm gonna set this right on top of that and try to line it up as best as I can. It's all a little blurry and that's okay. Click and then I'm gonna paint to the left. But before I do, notice that little plus sign that's moving around. That plus sign to the left of my stamp is showing you where it's selecting 
to stamp. So if I move my mouse to the right, you see that that little plus sign is telling me where it's going to select what it's putting in the stamp. So if I keep going, notice it does a pretty good job, and I can go over here and cover that up. If you move slow, you can see what you're doing. Now right there, you're starting to see the toe come in. Because if you look at the plus sign, that's right about where her toe would have been, which just means we've sort of hit the end of what we can do with this stamp selection, meaning that I just need to reselect my stamp. Okay, so now that, again, this is where her toe would have been and that's what it's seeing. But if I come over here, again, now that we've stamped all this in, I will have additional range, so to speak, because now it's not seeing that toe, it's seeing what we stamped in. So I'm basically re-stamping stamp right here, but that's okay. All right, so now it's starting to run into a little issue where it's kind of veeing down a little bit. So for that reason, uh, I'm gonna come down here and stamp some of this and then bring that over here and maybe even see if I can line that up and just kind of paint that in. Now it's not perfect, but it's pretty good for a blurry background. Okay, and let's see here. Now, and again, she's gonna end up covering up a lot of this, but it's always nice to just stamp out the entire background if you can, if you have the means to. So now I'm gonna do the same thing, but come over here, maybe even start way back here and try to guess to a certain extent. Again, just trying to continue that railing that looks pretty decent right there. I can live with that. And then I'm going to kind of look at some of these handrails going up here. There's a little white rail above it, but we don't really see it anywhere. I could probably try to grab that right there. Now you're seeing the leg for some reason. I don't know why, but as soon as I hit option, it's showing me what's under my stamp tool. So I'm going to click here, select, and I'm going to go over to this spot right here and start to stamp and paint. And I'm just going slow and just making sure things line up the way I was hoping they would. And so I'm seeing we have another railing, so we need another kind of T up here. So I'm looking for a clean one that kind of matches the angle. There's not a lot of them. Um, hmm. See this one right here looks good. Put that down come over here, paint that out, paint over to the left. Again, I'm just looking where that plus sign is selecting. I can see that it's selecting a safe area. Also seeing a little bit of stuff I'll have to correct in here. But we're getting in there, we're pretty much getting there. So again, we got this rail over here. Come over, stamp that in, and then you can just paint in the rest because it's a repeating shape. Now I could definitely go in and kind of pull out some of these repeating lights. It'd be pretty easy to just come over and uh, shrink this down. Uh, quite again, she's gonna she's gonna cover most of them, so it's not even really that big of a deal. Uh, all right, now I'm looking at these diagonal stairs going down, so I'm gonna go ahead and sample some of those way up here and whoops wrong tool stamp tool Let's see sample these up here and then come in and paint over on I'm just trying to continue that diagonal line I can do the same thing now I'll grab the you win. And I, I, I have the same grab the edge of it here and just kind of follow the line down again being careful not to restamp what you'd removed. There we go. I can live with that. And this is a pretty easy pattern. This is just red and black blurry dots. So we'll just come in and start stamping this out. And I'm noticing right here, we want to be careful, maybe shrink down a little bit. I'm gonna grab over here. So I'm just kind of following this horizontal plane. 
and oops, stamp over here, select over there, and stamp over here. Okay, so now she's pretty much gone. Can I live with that? Yeah, is it perfect? No. I mean, if I really wanted to go back and do some fix up work, I would pretty much fix this bar right here, which probably could be done pretty easily by just blowing up the stamp, coming over here, holding down option, selecting, coming over here, and lining it up, and there we go. That looks passable. Again, remembering that th most of this is going to be behind and not even really ever noticed or seen. Okay, now we got her stamped out. Now we just have to do the bar. And the bar is easy to get out, but actually the bar is not a big deal um, because luckily we've got some pretty good patterns we can kind of work off of here. So let's see. I can use the stamp tool probably right here. Let's see, where could I use it? Right there. Option click. Come down here. I do need that bar in the middle. So technically what I should probably do is come down here and select this little part of the bar and just start walking it down the page. And by clicking every time, I'm kind of creating this repeating pattern, which I really don't like. Uh, but again, I think it's gonna be pretty minor in the long run for this one. Uh, a good stamp job can take a couple hours to do right. Obviously we are doing the faster stamp job. You can definitely get by stamping out less, but the benefit of stamping out more means that you can have more movement in your subject without accidentally revealing the person, you know, that you didn't stamp out entirely. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Okay, my pattern's off there, so I'm gonna undo that. Again, just come up and grab a chunk and just try to line it up and continue the pattern. Now it's a little tricky when we get over here because we can't even really even see what's behind this. You can see these, so that's easy to continue. Okay, so all I really wanna try to get in here is just some gray and white stuff. I'm not too worried about it. So what I think I'm gonna do is show you guys that technique I used in class where we take the polygon lasso tool. It's, uh, it's the third tool down and then you have to click on it and select the middle. And I'm going to come over here. The nice thing about the polygon lasso tool is that it selects in straight lines which makes it easy to select a piece like that. Copy it. Command C, Command V. Okay, now when you copy it, it automatically takes you to that layer. So notice that my, there's my copy right there, it's selected. I'm gonna hit Command T to free transform that now. And I'm gonna pull it down a little bit and then hit return. It's a little bit skewed. It's also got a little extra dark pixels there that I didn't want. I'm now gonna hit the V key to bring about my selection tool and then use the arrows to walk it back up a little bit. I'm using the arrow keys. And then I'm gonna hit E for eraser. And I'm gonna er I'm gonna carefully erase as much of that as I can. Just kind of getting some of those black pixels out of there. And knowing that, you know, if I if I erase below that line, I'm gonna start showing through. Uh, now there's another tool as well that we can reshape this with that works better in this situation where we've got a skewed angle. If we go up to uh, file excuse me, if we go up to edit, transform, warp, that brings about this nice little grid and then we can fix these things however we want. This really warps the pixels and this isn't gonna look all that great from a 
resolution standpoint, but it's blurry to begin with, so that's there. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe they're using a eraser tool with a soft edge and just come in here and kind of try to blend it in a little bit. I'm gonna use a large size eraser, but I have to click off because for some reason it's... Okay, we're not looking to adjust opacity. I don't know why that's selected. There we go. Okay, now I can make my eraser nice and large. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually using this to kind of just feather the edge on this. And soften it up a little bit, kind of create a little blend. And that, to me, for this is okay. Now I just need to finish these guys up and I can move on. And again, for this week, all you needed to do was have this all clipped out. Oops, make sure I go back to the right tool. Hit the S key for the stamp tool or for the clone tool as they call it. And I'm just trying to get some steps in here. I, I'm not going for perfection. So it looks a little better. Okay, I can live with that. So now we turn our rail back on and our grill back on, and we have our Photoshop document ready to be animated. Uh, so now you want to hit Option Command S, and that is Save As, basically, meaning it's going to give us the opportunity to not save it as a JPEG like we brought it in, but instead save it as our Simone Biles Rio, and I usually put SEP for separated. Okay, that means it's ready to animate. When I see SEP, I know that I've gone through the time to separate out the layers. And you absolutely do not want to save it as a JPEG. If you save it as a JPEG, it's going to flatten everything, meaning it's going to basically take your three separated layers and turn them back into that same original JPEG. So what we want to do is save as a Photoshop document, which is a .psd, and we will then import that into After Effects, and we'll do that in a separate tutorial. So I'll click Save, and I will be done. All right, I'll see you in part two.